What's going on guys? My name is Mitya. I helped companies create more than a hundred software products and on this channel I'm sharing my experience every week to help you better navigate the technology business. The tech industry can seem a little mysterious to people from the outside, frankly mostly because tech people like to think of themselves as little geniuses, but it absolutely doesn't have to be that way. In this video I'm gonna break down the creation of software products so that anyone can understand it. Hi grandma! Don't get me wrong, this is not a programming tutorial. I mean, everyone can learn programming too, but it takes a lot of time to get good at it. My video is aimed at people who need to be involved in the process of creating software, but a little indirectly. Perhaps you or the company you work for are a client and the software is being made for you. Or maybe you just decided to take a dive into the tech entrepreneurship Whatever it is, you need to understand what's going on in order to guide the process so that the software is created with your interests in mind. And yes, you cannot touch anything physically with your hands here in this business, but this is basically the only part that takes some getting used to. Here are the super basic steps that any software product goes through. Prototyping. You know how architects creating a building don't start with the shovel right away? Same with software. You need to create a blueprint for the future product first. It can be a visual prototype or a text document specifying the details. The latter is a little old school in my opinion, but you might need to choose it if the product is very big and complex and has a lot of different stakeholders. This is a crucial step because unlike what follows, it's easy and cheap to experiment here and even maybe scrap everything completely and start over. When it comes to tools, it's mostly done with uh, Figma these days. Architecting. The main decisions should be taken here and high level technical architecture should be established to make sure the product has a firm foundation. It has to be scalable, future proof and what's very important, the architecture should allow for easy and constant modifications that are definitely gonna be needed. Visual design. In reality, this step often happens in parallel to the previous one. This step can be viewed as an overlay that gets on top of the prototype created at step one, and you can basically think of it as a beautification stage. Design is subjective, but it's recommended to follow the established patterns here in order to not confuse your future customers. Common modern tools for this are Figma and Sketch, as well as good old Adobe, Photoshop and Illustrator. Do you want to learn more about navigating the technology business? I'm right in the middle of what's going on because with my agency, we're working with uh, Silicon Valley startups and global enterprise businesses to help them get to the cutting edge of technology. Subscribe to my channel for weekly insights. Development. This is the stage that most people imagine when anyone speaks about creating software. It's crucial to realize that this is an important, but not the only stage of the process. If other steps aren't done very well, the development phase, even if done correctly, will not result in a good product. But essentially, this is where engineers create the code, which they store in code repositories. You might hear the word git a lot which is basically a way for engineers to control versions and work together efficiently. QA or quality assurance. In this phase, the software is being tested to make sure it meets the expectations and the quality standards. QA is a broad term and can involve manual QA, where people perform actions, automated QA, where scripts perform those actions, load testing, where the software is being tested to work well under heavy usage and much, much more. Don't let me mislead you by the sequential way I'm telling about the process. In reality, QA is not something that happens after development. It's an ongoing process that happens in parallel, after and even before development kicks in. Launch. Hooray, you arrived at the point where the world can see what you've built. The jump Let's go. Way. 
Ha! At this stage, your product has to be deployed somewhere, which for a web application usually means on a server using one of the modern distributed cloud platforms. The most popular of them and probably the most robust is AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services. In reality, your product had been deployed somewhere already because you and your team were testing it along the way. But the aim of this video is to simplify the process so that it's less intimidating. Launching something should be approached with caution, especially if it's a B2C product. A rule of thumb here is to start small. Improving your product. Remember, if a software product is successful, the work on it will be perpetual. Think about it, even household products like Adobe Photoshop or Microsoft Word have been around for like 30 or 40 years maybe, and they're still actively being developed every single day and perhaps by thousands of people. Nothing's ever perfect, you need to constantly update the product to conform to ever-changing ecosystems, to keep up with the competition and so on. You've embarked on a wonderful journey that's gonna be full of growth, learning and overall just so much fun. There is no better feeling than working on something. The journey is the reward. Was this video helpful to you? If you're already an insider, please let me know in the comments down below what helped you apprehend the basics of technology business when you were just starting out. I'm sharing my experience of building software products every week. Please like this video to help me with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned. See you!